Are you serious? So this is how to kill an hour. There's plenty of ways to kill time out there. Thank you for killing time with us in advance. I'm Marcus Bronzy. Just want to let you know that there is a great way you can keep abreast of what is happening in the world of how to kill an hour. And that is by heading to our website, howtokillanhour.com. Also Google us because we're at the top <laughs> like you should be in 2018. Anyway, let's kick off today's show. We are joined by a tech expert to say the least someone who's been on all of the television channels i feel but most recently has been residing on the gadget show uh welcome to the show georgie barrett Woo! Yes. Nice. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. Woo! Slap in here, Bill. come on billy so he was oh. slow on that wasn't he he, d- he does it deliberately he just, okay he he's like playing him. hard to yeah, get he yeah how's um, it going georgie yeah really well thanks thanks for having me no problem at all man thank you for joining us on the show you are an expert at killing time specifically an hour because you've managed to kill an hour before you've even pressed record today. Apologies, apologies. I got the time wrong. I basically thought I was five minutes late. It turns out I'm an hour and five minutes late. So, um, yeah, it's not, not the best start. Just style it out. Just, just style like, it out. Yeah. That's literally the first thing you said to me there. You were like, oh, well, uh, at least you know how to kill an hour. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Very on brand. Always Very on brand. bang on brand. Uh, so we like to talk about how one has been killing time recently. We call it kill a bit, actually. So how have you been killing a bit of time recently? So... Recently, I've gone very analog, and this is by not me volunteering at all. I basically lost my phone at the beginning of September. We're now at the end of September, so I've had almost a month without proper connection and without a proper phone, and it has been killing me. It really has. So I've actually taken to reading quite a lot. Um, so yeah, reading. That's that's how I've been recently killing time. So you are a, a tech connoisseur, I'm going to say. So this is you're embarrassing. Somebody, you're in this world where I presume there is a lot of social media technology and stuff. Oh, actually, let's take it back a little bit. How did you lose your phone? Like, what happened? Oh, uh, okay. I was, I was, I was a, uh, at a wedding in right. France, which was lovely. Right. Um, and I just left it in the taxi. And I was so convinced that I just left it at home. I didn't even bother calling it or anything. <laughs> and then a day later, I was like, oh, I really should try and find my phone now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, since then, since then, I've been with an a very, very embarrassing iPhone 4. An iPhone An 4? An iPhone 4. I don't even have the right charging lead for it, so I have to carry around an old speaker that I can like dock it into to charge, and it lasts about three hours, and I can just really make phone calls off it. That's all I can do. So you're on the... Uh, the was That was the iPhone that, which had the edges, wasn't it? I I look at that, that had, that had the, the sharp edges, because the this iPhones will, before it were make round. This will nostalgic, Marcus. An old school iPhone. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, that's what we're talking about. An iPhone that fits in my hand with ease. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I this mean, is the one it's... with the metal bit around the edges. This is just for you when you listen to the podcast. I've got to describe this because it had the metal buttons for volume. Oh, my gosh. I would like to insert now, I do get given other lovely phones. <laughs> but because I'm a lovely person, I always give them away. Um, right. And I just hadn't prepared for this eventuality. And it's basically taken ages to get it back on insurance because yeah. I, I was always missing some kind of form or whatnot. But you know in 2018, retro is in though, right? I so know. right now, you're <laughs> retro phoning out here. I know, I know, I know. So I'm, I'm very looking forward to getting it back and to, you know, scroll a little bit more with my life. Yeah, what's it, God, what's it like then? Because I think I've done like... 30, uh, 30 hours without my phone by accident once and that was interesting to say the least but what's the experience like what were the first few days like and what's it like now kind of having that digital detox it yeah it was really interesting like i do i do think about how much i'm on my phone quite a lot and to sort of be forced to do it has made me think how you know what it is it's more about my concentration time that's definitely gone up so when i'm just working at the computer and my phone is out next to me i'm constantly as soon as i get to a tricky bit of my work i'm i go straight onto my phone yeah. and i just like have a little scroll for a bit and then get lost on it for in a bit in it for a bit and it was it's been really good not having that however getting around generally staying in contact with people um ordering ubers working out how to get places i mean the list of of having it so outweighs that extra bit of concentration time but i can't wait to get the new iphone uh to do the is 12 um what's it called screen time, screen See, time. i'm behind because i don't even i can't even get this yet it's pretty um, cool because billy's actually got his hands on the on the new iphone he, he managed to get it when you got it good day release bill yeah day release yeah. day release how, how, are you, how are you finding it mate it's all right. Not much different than the previous one, but are you using Screen Time like the 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 app that kind no, of tells you no, 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 really? Oh, you see, I would be all over that. 
I'm, I would be really, really interested to see how much time I spend and to set time limits as well. Yeah. You know, like Instagram, I just, an hour can go by and sometimes it makes me feel shit about myself as well. It's true. Yeah, it is because you, you're like, what, I could have done something more with that time. I know. But, and um, you know, like when you're perving on other people's lives and this is a really curated view they're giving of their lives. You're like, why, why do I not have as many friends and look as hot and have all those things? We were just talking before we press record about how people are always showing that the fact that they're living their best life on Instagram. Precisely. And you're not, you very rarely see anyone having anything other than hashtag good times. Out yeah, there. which is absolutely fine. I think, you know, it, by the nature of things, you don't want to post boring stuff. Um, it is meant to be a platform. It yeah. is meant to be that curated view of what you get up to. Um, but equally, if you're surrounding yourself with that all the time, then it can it can make you feel a bit like you're qu not quite achieving. Yeah, it makes you feel like I need, I need to catch up. I know. Yeah, Why yeah. is everyone else doing these things and I'm not? Yeah, so screen time's good for that. I mean, I don't know. It felt a bit weird the first time my phone told me that's enough, go to bed. It's too late for you to be on Snapchat. <laughs> that was a bit mad because I, I unlocked my phone and it kind of, it dims out all of, it's great that you've not seen it because I can explain it. It dims all the apps that it deems not necessary. Ah. So it's funny texting you can still do but like pretty much anything that's fun yeah it dims it and if you try and select it it says ah, uh, ah, naughty, ah, but yeah you stop that um and you can override it so, and you set you set how how long you want to be on each one i set i set so a this is general time how, limit. how long how long are you saying for all this stuff? i'm saying from 10 o'clock till yep. six i don't want to be doing anything it. other than necessary things and okay. that's that's how i have it set up at the moment would you would you ever set a time limit like just saying no more than an hour on something per day? Can you do that? I could, I could, I think you can set it so that when it locks you out, you can come back in for a little bit longer, like another fifteen minutes. I've not set it to specific apps cutting me off. I don't know if I want, if I could. I don't know if I want to do that because I feel like during the day I'm, I may need to do those extra swipes yeah. on a Instagram and <laughs> snap. I don't know man I think for me it's, it's not being up late at night looking at the blue light yeah. and staying awake that's the main thing for me because yeah. I, I can go to bed have a little swipe and then it's one in the morning I know and then I'm not going to get a good just get sleep. you get lost on that rabbit hole of shit yeah exactly <laughs> so we've heard what it's like from your side to kind of have this digital detox how were your friends when you suddenly weren't appearing in the whatsapp group i know whatsapp again th that's really it does take up a lot of time whatsapp stuff yeah. so that's something i've realized that hasn't actually impacted that much because if people do want to call me they can call me um but the whole sort of inane chat i've just stepped out of for a month and it, I, I do feel a little bit more sort of disconnected from them but actually I mean I don't think I've missed out on anything I still see them at the weekends and stuff and they still say the same thing that they would say on WhatsApp but equally I will look forward to getting my phone back I've yeah. actually got it I've got I've, I've just picked up my phone so okay, I will cool. I'll be up and running I'll be connected again in the meantime you have got quite a crafty way of kind of staying a little bit connected though right haven't you What's that? The iPad that you whipped out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of like, um, I even once when I was uh, going on the aeroplane, I had to use my laptop to sort of scan in my boarding pass. They're like, who is this girl? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's like having a very big, very big iPhone. Hey, listen, I think we're almost there actually with some of the big iPhones. They are looking I very fablity. Um, so that's how you've been killing time recently, detoxing yourself. That's great. But you've been filming a gadget show, right? Yeah, so next series uh, is starting middle of October. Um, so we've been quite busy. We sort of like backlog maybe sort of three or four episodes, the little VTs, the little segments that go in the middle. Um, so we've been over to IFA. Me and Otis went over there, which was really good fun. Um, and like, you know, IFA, CES, Mobile World Congress, I always like to tick those tech conferences or exhibitions off because i just think it's really good at sort of setting you up for for what's going to come out in the next year and just sort of seeing the trends i mean you know you can't have a completely new trend every single year but just seeing seeing the way that smartphones are going seeing the way that maybe alexa is being integrated a lot more you do get a vibe for, for what's coming and what, what what's what the year ahead's going to be like um so yeah we went over there i saw my first 8k tv 8k 8k i mean it is sexy it looks amazing it genuinely looks almost like holographic 
coming out at you. But there's no 8K content in the world. Full stop. I was going to say, like, well, who's shooting in 8K? Like, movies, I, I guess, you could get in 8K? No. no? There is the literally no... They, they, they only make it for the TVs that are going, you know, on display purposes. All right. So, at the moment, it is a little bit redundant. Now, they do, like, upscale um, content using AI quite quite efficiently cool. and, and that, that seems to work quite well but I don't know how, how that would compare if you just had a really good 4K TV yeah so, and there's also it's, like it's coming the... like 8K is coming wow it will eventually and uh, ultimately this is how it works you know the TV manufacturers make it make the TV they can put up 8K and then slowly we'll start to see content being released so they um, they're sort of saying that the Olympics that will be a time where they'll start to have 8K content sports coming out sports would be phenomenal. phenomenal phenomenal and gaming I can imagine yeah, would be really good yeah gaming would be insane because if you watch like football in 4K um, just the fact that you can see bits of grass flying around when the ball's getting kicked it just adds that amazing realism to the it. only thing is is that do you ever find this with 4k when you watch like a a series or something and sometimes it looks a bit fake like you can sort of see the makeup on them and like yeah. the lighting yeah. it's always a bit too obvious sometimes there's a lot of i've got a few mates that work in production and they said they had to step their game up not only with 4k but when uh, hd became a thing that was going to become regularly consumed they were like, we. There's certain things we could get away with that you just ask, oh, stick a bit of tape in it. No one will see it. In yeah, the I know. You can't do that. You anymore. really can't. Yeah. And you can like see if things look a bit cardboardy. You're like, nah, nah, looks a little bit cheap. That. Yeah. You're like, that's that's a that's a water pistol you painted grey. That ain't a gun, then, <laughs> mate. Now I'm not scared anymore. Now, now when I'm watching the Bodyguard, I'm. And actually, wait, I can't give any spoilers. I'll get an absolute roast in from. Did you like the Bodyguard? I thought it was amazing. Just yeah. like Line of Duty, because it's the same writer, I believe, and some of the same producers. I came in halfway through the series and had to go back and watch. I think I went watched episode three and I was like, right, I'm going back to episode yeah. one and watched it. Um, one of the best shows I've watched this year. It rated so well. It was, yeah. like it was getting over like 10 million, 11 million views, yeah. which in, in this day and age, this TV clam, it's very good. It's good. And it was also a very diverse set. Of, of of characters in it like you know there was a really good mixture of men and women and i just thought the roles that they played kind of broke stereotypes but without forcing it down your throat kind of thing like there was a bit of backlash from some arseholes on the internet basically complaining about oh no, no these women in powerful positions but i was like no nah, fuck that the content's great the show's yeah. amazing it's a great watch great Absolutely. watch give me some more bodyguard apparently season two they're gonna do i don't know how i don't know how how much more I'm can we go think, through what? <laughs> as a man he needs exactly. a break <laughs> he just needs to rest up yeah put his phone down just yeah. have some him time he needs to chill while we watch luther there you go <laughs> um so yeah so um Aoife was really cool for you yes. and um i kind of want to ask you like what what can you tell us about the new series like what, what are you yeah. allowed to tell us because a lot of the things you've done have been shrouded in mystery and you've revealed as much as you can like when you went to facebook yes so we so yeah so um so in terms of this series coming up um in all honesty I only really know about the bits that I filmed so okay. this is the one thing that I've really noticed from being a tech journalist where you're sort of um sort of creating your own content and sort of liaising with the brands and PRs directly to now being part of a TV show it's like a, such a bigger process that goes on. And actually, I'm just like the little person at the end that people go, <laughs> oh, oh, we better tell Georgie what she's up to now. So I'm just not part of those conversations. So um, it genuinely comes as a surprise to me most of the time of, of what we're getting up to. And we were meant to do a trip to China, but unfortunately it had to get cancelled because we that there was visa complications and all this stuff, which was, which was really disappointing because um, I would have loved that. Mm. Um, but yeah, but we, we as I said, we got Efa, and we've just filmed a nighttime special um, where we're sort of looking at gadgets that can either, uh, as a sort of as as the clock ch clocks change, think about what you can do in your evenings. Um, we looked at some sad gadgets, you know. The uh, you, we just looked this up: the seasonal affective disorder. That's it, right? Seasonal so, affective disorder. So th these are gadgets that um, try and combat the fact that people naturally feel a little bit more lethargic and tired during the winter months. Yeah. So it's things like a uh, the Lumi body clock alarm clock so it's like a light that wakes you up and um using light as therapy so there's some quite interesting stuff there that i'm like i definitely want to have that for this yeah. for this winter coming up um and um we did it we did a really cool um outdoor cinema setup where we had like this sort of inflatable screen that almost looks like um 
almost like a bouncy castle you know like it sort of has hot air that comes into it um, and it's massive it's like three meters by four meters um, and then we had a really good epson short throw projector and they're just really good on the gadget show of like not doing just the one gadget, but like the bean bags we were on were really cool. And the way that we like um, made the, the food that we we're going to eat was really um, interesting. So, yeah, stuff like that. I'm like, I so want that in my house. Yeah. And this is the other thing. I used to get loads of freebies. I never get freebies anymore. What? I know. I thought you'd be swimming in the freebies. I thought I would be as well. It's really disappointing. It all goes into that giveaway. They're like, and, and we're going <laughs> to give away this and this and this. I know. You should yeah. try recording the voiceovers on those. It, it, you know, it leaves you puce in the face. It's insane. It is, it insane. is insane. Like, just in case you were not a watcher of the Gadget Show, please pay special attention to the giveaway. I mean, do, is it true that you have to give away storage with it as well? Yes, we do. We do a month's free storage. Apparently, though, um, people get the price of the next day on, uh, on eBay. On, on eBay. <laughs> yeah. You see them all go up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah fair also, enough. You can't, you can't expect them to keep hold of it all. Listen, There's, fair dues. If you win, you win. Do with it what you need precisely. to. Precisely. You do what you but need to if do, If you mate. can lend me a phone, I would yeah. really appreciate that. Just yeah. the ba- basics I'm missing out on yeah. at the moment. Little things like, you know, a phone. <laughs> <laughs> or if you come across a charger, an old school one. Yeah, yeah exactly. Help you out. That's wicked, man. That's cool. Um, I've got to say, what I like about the Gadget Show as well and i feel like you've done with the last uh season and, and this one is that i like it when there's genuine fails as well it's not like everything you bring on the show is like oh it works it's great it's amazing have we got and you don't have to explain what they are have we got a few funny little things that are gonna go wrong here and there oh let me think i mean don't get me wrong every gadget show shoot and we always try and give the gadgets a, a fair yeah, <laughs> the yeah, gadgets. yeah a fair run, it's yeah. like they've got their yeah. own union or something <laughs> <laughs> give the gadgets a fair yeah, turn yeah. Um, we we always do try and like sort of make sure they that it's not just down to us being a little bit silly getting them out of the packet or whatever. But I mean, every single time there's always one that doesn't work. I think it's always wicked. one that doesn't I love work. It. I think I saw like an egg. Is it like a scrambled egg maker when you oh, did like a yes. barbecue and it made some disgusting it egg It really did, and it tasted it tasted horrible as <laughs> yeah. well. I think Otis undercooked them. Yeah. yeah, I've got to say, I don't feel like he... Uh, sorry, Otis, I know you're listening. <laughs> I don't think he can throw it down in the kitchen using those gadgets at all. Like, if, if I went into his kitchen and I saw those, I'd be like... Uh, ba- really sure. Basically, we're all we're all a bit crap at cooking, um, yeah. but often we have to do cooking features, and it's quite hilarious trying to watch us put something together. Yeah, we're like we're like. There's probably a reason we're not on the Bake Off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Um, your Christmas special was pretty cool last year, so I'm I'm expecting big things from yes, this year. Yes, absolutely. I love. They're really good fun those sheets because yeah. we're all together. We fi- even though it looks like one episode, we film it over two days. Oh. So there's always like an epic feeling of sort of getting it through through everything. Um, and then, obviously, in the middle day, we in the in the evening, we'll we'll have a drink or two, a little beverage. No, exactly. Craig Charles is there, so yeah, you think, know yeah, he's yeah. leading the charge on really? that one. Really? Oh, what a surprise! <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy. Uh, oh. But yeah, it's good fun. They're really good fun. But we always fill those in like October time. So I'm I'm dressing up in Christmas jumpers yeah. far too early. Does it get you in the Christmas spirit already? Because I have noticed there are Christmas displays up, and uh, as we speak, this is the end of September 2018. And I'm seeing Christmas displays. I know. Up in shops. I've now had to like re- rethink uh, like my attitude towards this because it used to get me really annoyed. But now I'm like, no, it is just basically a season that goes from October to end of December. And yeah. don't think of it as that one Christmas day because that's silly. Um, yeah. So embrace all things festive. Yeah. What's your technique months. for Christmas present buying? What's your techers? Uh, predominantly online. Yes. Uh, yeah, predominantly online. And, and, and actually, early. like, freebies <laughs> yeah, as well. Freebie. <laughs> <laughs> the few freebies I do have, I'm like, is it really obvious I've got been given that? Yeah, you know, yeah. Setting that off to, you know, various sort of distant relatives. So there yeah. you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely at a camp where, I'm, end of October, I've got to be honest, 99% of my Christmas shopping has been ordered, is on the way to me. I yeah. may have ticked. If you've ever wondered why the wrapping and the present I give you is so great, I may have ticked gift wrap. Like, I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm that guy. Are you Are you like a Black Friday, Cyber Monday dude? <sighs> no. I'm a, I'm a, while everyone's running around being a nutter, sitting at home with a brandy, watching you on the news, <laughs> <laughs> killing each other. These ma- like There was a there's an old school film with Arnold Schwarzenegger in it where he's trying to get a, a, a turbo man called Jingle All The Way I think it is and he wants to get this one toy for his son yeah. I remember watching it when I was a kid and watching this poor dad 
go through hell to get one toy. I remember watching that saying, I never want to ever do that ever. Even yeah. in the end, he gets the, the toy. Spoiler. Uh, I'm like, nah, Christmas time. I want to be consuming beverages and eating be relaxed, all the foods. Yeah. Precisely. I want to be getting the first chocolates out of the celebrations, all the good ones. Those videos from Black Friday are ridiculous, though, it's aren't nuts. they? Like proper punch ups. Exactly. Proper like scrambling to yeah. get into the shops. And I saw some of the junk that people are grabbing, like, oh, I, ne- <laughs> I, I need that, that enormous barbecue. I'm like, really? Re- a bu- really a barbecue in December? No. I do get carried away with it. I'm like, Oh, two electric toothbrushes. Of course I need <laughs> yes. multiple ones. Yes, well, just in case. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, you know, you always lose it, your electric yes, toothbrush ex- just like socks. <laughs> <laughs> it's more expensive yeah. than just the one, but why not? Yeah, what the it's heck? It's a deal. Yeah, definitely. Um, so also, you've been up to some podcast business as well, well haven't you? Yeah, I have. I have. Um, so I've been doing a... We haven't started releasing. We're sort of like trying to bank a couple before we release them weekly. Um, looking at different... Uh, industries that have been disrupted so uh, it's quite cool it's um it's in collaboration with a co-working space called fora space this is a cool co-working space that you guys are based in thank you very much yeah it's nice it's got vibes in here it's got good vibes in here it really has yeah it's got good vibes uh a little bit of history used to be a kitchen like an industrial kitchen factory then was a bunch of industrial kitchen yes yes it was Uh, then it used to be loads of music studios and it became shared office space okay that's why we snatched a little studio so is this was this an old studio from that time yeah so the way that this this is set up uh we've got like uh, a floor that's slightly raised so that we don't disturb anyone else with our loud laughs or music and uh yeah soundproof room so we've managed to grab one of the old studio rooms and kind of repurpose it so yeah yeah got good vibes in here Thank yeah, you very like much. I don't, I don't, have you ever had a complaint about this house killing our studio? No. It's not like and the it, first place, is it, that we're in? No. The, the dungeon. The dungeon that doesn't yeah. exist anymore. Yeah, come along. Oh, has it been knocked down? It's been, it's the uh, building, like, uh, what is it, like uh, something else now, isn't it? Yeah, the flat, building site. Flat, I like probably. this. I've sort of got a history of London buildings. Hey, hey. Anything happens story, on yeah. this podcast. Hey, hey, hey. Do you want another fact as well? Go on. There's a Spider-Man. It's world exclusive. Yep. My dad used to work here as well. No. Long, long time ago. Long, long time what, the ago. the kitchen factory? Yeah, he did. Did yeah, they? They're getting a little bit of dollar in back ah, in the day. Yeah, there you go. How funny. Yeah. So you must live near here then? Not too far. Not too far from here. We won't We won't give you a dress out. Just no, yet. no, no. Not just yet. <laughs> Thanks. Billy, don't. Yeah, Billy, we'll find out. <laughs> right. Uh, actually, you know what? Before we crack on with the podcast, um, I feel like everybody on the Gadget Show has their own area. I feel like when it's, when it's John... I feel like photography. Yes. That's his that's his yep. area. I Agreed. feel like when it's Otis, it's let's make him scared and shout and scream, right? <laughs> Craig which, is Which get, he does far it, too easily. I mean, there's nothing sweeter than hearing him <laughs> at his highest pitch. <laughs> um <laughs> I feel like Craig uh, Craig's like you're every man. I like yep. he gets involved and he kind of dips into everything. I feel like you are the 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 secret agent of the gang. They send you off to places that no one else is usually allowed, like including in Facebook. Because let's talk about that. Because I think that was absolutely awesome. Yeah. We got to see an area of Facebook you never really ever see at quite an interesting time actually, where Facebook was in the press quite a lot. Absolutely. So we went over to San Francisco to Facebook headquarters there, um, and it was we were predominantly doing Oculus Rift, but just being so it is incredible. This this their whole office. There's like sort of ten thousand people in this compound. It's a bit like a university campus, and every single restaurant, everywhere you go, it's free. So you like just walk around the place. You can like go in. And they're like dif- they're like different restaurants and stuff, but everything's free. You can just take anything you want. And uh, sorry, this is slightly not talking about Oculus Rift at all, but we yeah, love free cool. food. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all about the food, mate. <laughs> um, and they say that part of their training program now is they have to tell people when they go into um, when they start working at Facebook that you've really got to think about it when you go out in the normal world because Facebook staff kept just taking things from shops because they get oh. so used to just walking out without paying, and without just thinking, just going to the ice cream shop, getting their ice cream, walking out the shop, or whatever water bottles, whatever it may be. They're just nicking stuff left right and center i would love to see someone trying to explain to an officer no, no, officer, i wasn't exactly. stealing i work for facebook that's what i was trying to do what's up bill i read online that um people who work at facebook they they kind of just live there because they can yeah. just get everything they need lunch breakfast dinner yeah. have, they got par- have they got apartments there georgie no not that i saw just or live know of. sleep at their office or something sleep but like office. mark zuckerberg works in the middle of this big co-working space like he doesn't have a special office he's literally just like in the middle of this massive space 
And they also um, they have they have like loads of these helium balloons everywhere that have different numbers on. I was like, oh, what's that mean? And if you, every year you work there, you get a different helium balloon with um, however many years you've been there. So they're like any year, and I, I may get this wrong, but like any any balloon that's like above seven means that they are absolutely loaded because they were there like yes. when it was still really yeah. small. You were there so when the shares see, like, were exactly. Yeah. You see when you, a balloon nine, you're like, oh god, they must be big. <laughs> yes, the share options gang, the people that are just there for a bit of fun. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Exactly, exactly. They're just they're just riding that wave. They're like, yeah. this is working for me. That's insane. But yeah, we so apart from the free food, which I absolutely you enjoyed. Smashed that, right? Tell yes, me you I smashed, smashed it. it. Did you oh, do the sweetie machine? as well yes. yes and ice cream and i think we got donuts at some point um i mean all the all the health food options yes. and they even have like a cheese cheese shop thing at the top of like on this like roof oh. it, i know it is really fancy i tell you mm. um but yeah we did um it's amazing seeing what they're doing with the oculus rift there so um i thought you were going to ask me what my part what i where i fit into the gadget yeah show no thing. Do, most certainly and i was i was going to say like vr like vr is something that i like really love Wicked. and we, i'm not that may be a bit niche but i do love vr yeah um and yeah so it was great seeing i did a uh VR experience which they're using at the moment to train nurses and you put this VR headset on and you have to um, resuscitate a baby or like you go through options resuscitating a kid and it's really powerful and they're actually using this now as a training program and they have to pass it in order to get through to the next you know to the next part of their course okay so this is like actual real world application in training people to become you know medical medically proficient in an area so it's really interesting because there's like two schools when we talk about VR here Everyone agrees it's fun. Mm. Some people are like, oh, I don't know what else it can do or how social it is. Like, so, but you're a big fan of it. What is it you love the most about VR? I guess it's one of those things that if it's a really good VR experience, I'm talking Oculus Rift or mm. HTC Vive, um, and someone hasn't used VR before and they put it on, I can guarantee they'll come out of it with their mouth open saying oh my gosh I've never experienced anything like that like that was just phenomenal and I think for tech to have that power on people I I, I just still don't think people have truly experienced what good VR feels like and how immersive it is and that's a word that's so overused when you're speaking about VR but truly when you come out of it and then you're just sort of placed in a in a normal room or you realize you're just at an exhibition center or something like oh wow i mean i've been to places you can't even imagine right now and like the scales of everything feel really realistic um i did i did the um have you done the blade runner experience no tell us about that man it's really cool um and and you say you and, and that's a really interesting sort of blurring of genres of it both being a game but also you experiencing the movie and they i like i don't know you just sort of tootle around and world for a bit but every so often they will they will play scenes to you and then you sort of will travel in the in the car somewhere else and it, it's just a really interesting sort of crossover between a game and you know experiencing a film um, and it really adds it really it really feels like you're there and i think also with vr is that you when you remember the vr world you're in it's like a real real memory instead of it being something where you sort of aware of other bits around you so yeah, I, I think it's really interesting the implications of that and and how it can be used, you know, to, uh, but but both for fun, but also for things like you know training people or yeah. educational purposes. Yeah, we've also had some good experiences here, great experiences with AR. As yes. Well. So what I should say? So want to try Magic Leap one. Uh, we've not. Have done, you we, tried it? We've no. done Star Wars. I can't remember the name of it. We'll put a link to it in the show description, but we've done a Star Wars one um, and it was sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was... Well, was that with well Magic as, Leap? I, I'm not sure if it's Magic Leap. Billy, do you mind doing the Googles while I talk to, to, to George? Is that all right? It, it wouldn't have been Magic Leap because that's... Um it, that's it, like a brand new thing. That's really like that's. Like, I think it's only. Uh, I, I haven't met any UK journalists that have tried Magic Leap, but okay. I'm sure some people have. So I've our, just predominantly read US reviews. Okay, cool. So uh, the Star Wars, the Star Wars one we did was it was as well as it being AR. So you wore a VR headset and you wore a, a, a remote pack. So you wear the computer that does the, yeah. the VR on you. It had um, special sensors that actually scanned your hands. 
but you weren't seeing your hands. You were seeing rendered versions Amazing. of your hands in the game with detail that meant yes. that you could move all your fingers. So the first thing I did with the cameraman, Paul, is flip the bird at him. I was like, yeah, definitely it works. <laughs> definitely works. And it had microphones that picked up your voice and transmitted it to a, to the other players, your stormtroopers. Yeah. Um, and they added air, which was blowing in your face. Yep. They added heat. They added moisture. They added loads of different things. And it was a really short experience, but it was really intense. And we came out the back end of that and we were just like, this is the future of cinema. I know. Yeah. This, they're, they're like hyper-reality Hyper, experiences. That's exactly what we call it, the hyper-reality yeah, experiences. They're, yeah. they're amazing. Um, I haven't done that one, um, but like I, I think it was an association with uh, HC, HTC Vive. Mm. Um, I did something where I sort of felt like I was climbing a mountain where they sort of had, you know, wind effects and yeah, yeah um, it's really, really cool. Talk to us about Magic like, Leap though, sorry, yeah. Well, I don't know too much about it. Okay. Um, so, um, yeah, it's sort of the next big AR headset. They had like... I'm not sure if billions is correct, um, but they definitely had like so many, like hundreds of millions invested in them. Um, and they only ever released like this sort of product video. Right. So people, and, and they've been quite, they've sort of, I mean, I think it's been in development for maybe eight years or something. And it's finally come out um, quite mm. recently. Um, so it's really exciting. Like um, it's sort of meant to be used for, while HoloLens is maybe used for um, more like practical things. So like in the workplace, this is meant to be for more like fun, fun things that you can do with it. So they've got like, you know, you can, one of the examples they have is like exploring different planets in your living room and things like that. Um, so yeah, I think it's really interesting. Having said that, it's one of those things that you look at it and you're like, already, even though it's brand new, I can tell that in the future, people will laugh. <laughs> and what this looks like I think yeah. that with VR yeah. as well yeah. like you know that people are going to like hold up photos be like oh my god <laughs> in 2018 you had this like massive thing on your head and it was attached to a wire you'd be like look love <laughs> we have to start somewhere alright oh, was that back in the day when you didn't even have 4k exactly. oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah that's the uh, that's the thing and and you know the VR headset so I did I did this VR world record where I had to play a VR game for 25 and a half hours which was quite boring Talk us through that because that is <laughs> that's quite a that's few hours to kill an hour. Yeah, it? that's very many. Twenty five and some. <laughs> and yeah, half, yes. yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, this was it was almost like one of the thing first things that they I did on the gadget show. Actually, tell you a story in my audition. Bearing in mind, like talks have been going on for ages. The final audition, they said to me like. Georgie, um, we're thinking of doing this VR world record. And obviously, I'm like, keen being Georgie, say yes yeah. to everything. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, absolutely. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. It was pretty much one of the first shoots that I had to do where they put me in this VR headset and I had to play this game for, as I said, 25 and a half hours. So I agreed to it in my audition. And then my agent was like, you can't always say no to this. I was like, no, I, I said I would do it. So Shout out to North forward. One. That is an amazing idea. <laughs> the production company behind the gadget show. That is an awesome production idea. So so we really like you, but hypothetically, exactly. We're gonna. Would you do VR for a week? <laughs> would you just just check in? Because that's what we're thinking. Yeah. Exactly. Because the job yeah. kind of depends on it. If you're yeah. gonna say no, then uh, yeah, we're afraid I mean, we'll go yeah. to someone else. I mean, the last person that tried it isn't with us anymore. But <laughs> what are your thoughts? Yeah. Like, no luckily, pressure. I don't get nauseous in VR. So lots of people. Have you? Do you ever yeah, I get. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I am prone to it. Yeah. Are so you? after about it depends if there's a lot of certain types of yeah. movement. Uh, yeah, Get I'm a bad. Sicky. But you're cool, right? Yeah, so I was cool, which actually made quite boring television because I was just sat there for 25 hours, sort of slumped in a chair, <laughs> looking into the sort of middle distance, yeah. playing on this yeah. game with my hands like this. What was it like so. coming back into the real world? Yeah, it was it was really strange. Like as I said, the sort of like ratios and proportions of things, and you know how you like move in VR worlds. It's sort of like you like jump, you like yeah. you can jump down places. I sort of felt like when I came out, I could sort of just push myself forward and then you were like oh I've I was like, oh, I was like, oh walk, god this man. walking is so oh, slow god's sake yeah but the other thing I tried um, at Oculus Rift was Facebook Spaces have you have you seen that at all yeah like pl please explain that to the listener because I think this has got really interesting so, like I started future gazing looking at it yeah. there's loads that they can be used for so Facebook Spaces is like a VR version of Facebook which allows you it, it turns you into an avatar um, and an avatar which you know you look avatar-y um, it's not like actually you but right. um, you you can create it like an emoji you know to vaguely resemble you um, but what's quite interesting is that it really does like follow your 
facial expressions and like the hand gestures you're moving because you, you've got it all on 3D capture. And then you can meet other avatars in this Facebook world, your Facebook friends. You have to be Facebook friends. Um, and you can just like hang out together. So you could potentially like watch a TV program together. You can, you know, play games, make notes. You can um, be in sort of a meeting room. R what's really cool is you can upload. So you can sort of the space you're in can be dictated by a 360 degree photo. So potentially, you know, you could be on holiday. You just take a 360 degree photo of where you are. You then meet up with someone and you can like sort of show them around like what's going on. But a bit like me here, I'm like pointing to you like this. When you're actually in the Facebook space with somebody else, it that is the that's what makes it feel, feel really real because he could be like pointing to something there and I really see what he's pointing at. I don't know. It was really interesting about how, yeah, it felt better than using something like FaceTime even though FaceTime you're actually looking at the person it felt more like you're engaging with them it's like more personal exactly but it did your, the, the only thing is your hand if you try and like touch somebody it disappears because they, they soon <laughs> realise quite early on and like when they're testing out with people that they would like rope each other <laughs> can, you, can you stop doing that exactly. please Sandra that's inappropriate exactly, it's a work it, meeting and, hey, it's, hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> and it's really offensive so um, in, in it he like sort of like offered to put a hat on me Yeah. and like, I didn't really know this dude he was like one of the developers and I was a bit like oh like yeah. I, I, even though it was in virtual reality and like we were in separate rooms I was like oh well don't, okay I'll, don't worry I can put that on myself it feels like you, you, you get convinced really quickly that's awesome so, yeah I'd, it's good I'd love to see the first meeting when somebody worked out they could just put their hand through your head while you're talking <laughs> yeah, to exactly. like bruv <laughs> could you stop please put that down <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so back to the podcast. So you two podcasts. Uh, so Dis Disruptor, did you say it was called? Yeah, Disruptor. Tech Disruptor Dis Series. Tech Disruptor, yeah. Um, yeah, so we basically, we look at different industries and see how they're being disrupted. So it's probably um, appeals more to people who have like startups. It's very much looking at the sort of startup scene that's mm -hmm. in London. So we have maybe like three or four disruptors on our, our like Ed sort of in the discussion each week. Um, so um, I'm going to gonna later today do one on recruitment, Ooh. which sounds really boring, but it's actually really interesting. It's like looking at like how AI will find jobs for you in the future and how you may not look at like job listings websites there's a really cool company called workspace who again are a london startup um and they're specifically de designed for software developers and you sort of like create this little shape about how you want to spend your day um and like what things interest you and so it literally they, they call it a workspace that they create for you um, and then an algorithm matches like the right jobs and the right sort of things to you so just like interesting thinking about like how, how those things will change. Um, last week we did um, the art industry and like seeing how that's being disrupted by tech. Um, we had a cool startup that's doing some fun stuff with augmented reality. So they're um, partnering up with different galleries and then you sort of can load up their app and you can go around and get extra information on the stuff that you're viewing. Even just like sort of basic information because sometimes it can be you know, it can it cannot be written in ways that's that's accessible. So just just looking at how how these industries are changing through the startup scene and the impact that's going to have in the future. That's awesome. Yeah, Georgie. Yeah, got a great idea. Go on for an app, right? Right, an app. It's an app. Right, it's on. related to actual recruitment. <laughs> Recru I can picture them later. Go on. This is recruitment Tinder. Do you imagine that? Yeah. It's like Tinder, but you swipe the job you like, and if somebody wants to interview, I feel you, like that already you, exists. But, oh, for God's sake. I feel yeah. like that already exists. Does it already exist? Yeah, I feel like I've seen adverts. How do you know about this, that Billy? Okay, yeah, like I say, I did, I've seen adverts from okay. right, on Is LinkedIn it? or whatever. Oh, all oh, right, whatever. I'll no. oh, scrap that. Apologies. Sorry. Yeah, as you done. Yeah, Basically, cool. everything's already been done. Bit That's shocked about how bit quick Billy was like, oh, yeah, I've been all over that app. Oh, cheers, <laughs> cheers, Bill. Thanks, mate. <laughs> he's been swiping. You've been thinking he's been swiping for Tinder. Yeah, I thought you were back on your tip. Uh, Billy's pretty, he's very active on Tinder. Are you? Oh, dear. Are you? Go on, share share with Georgie. Go not, on, not, not too active, no. You've had, you, had a Twitter, you had a Tinder coach. A Tinder coach? Get, Get out. out. Yeah, for like one episode, yeah. Oh, what did they tell you? The smile more. <laughs> oh yeah Billy has right moody he like does these moody black and white pictures it kinda looks oh like, dear you kind of like it, you kind of look like Wolverine like like um yeah you like got that huge Hugh Jackman look huge in, Jackman huge huge and Jackman remember that one yeah you got the Hugh Jackman look but he does like the noir version of, of like of the Wolverine film of Logan don't you I can really imagine that oh uh. 
<laughs> okay. But, but you but you told you said that you're not allowed to do that anymore. The he, Tinder coach told you. No smiling, yeah. He no, said, more he said more smiling. More smiling. He said be friendly. Be yeah. friendly. But he goes welcome for the blue welcome the ladies. Yeah. Men into your Don't life. scare them away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean dating apps are a funny old thing. I, I never really I'm I'm recently married, so I can't really go yeah, on I them guess, anymore. Yeah, <laughs> guess you're not really not really the one in it. Yeah, but um, I I I always feel like I always get confused when people complain about them. I just feel like they're only adding to your life. What are they taking away? It's re- it, it, what's interesting is that they've also become kind of like commonplace. Like I'm meeting couples that are married now. Like, yeah. like if you were to say I met I met my other half on I don't know. Well, no, I say I met the old fashioned way. That's how you know. Wow. Yeah, I, know. Yeah, I, met it, a, yeah. I met in a bar. Met in a bar. And he's like, oh, yeah, and you were like, yeah, you'll do. And he's like, <laughs> yes, all right. Literally. That's it. Yeah. Should That's we get it. married? Is it last week you met him? Oh, <laughs> yeah. cool. Wicked. Very quick turnaround on yeah. these things. No Very messing quick. around. No messing yeah. around. Well, when you've got no phone, you've got to make it happen. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> how do you give each other each other's number? Analog. Just be like, look, marry me, and then at least we'll know where we're at. Job on. Job on. Yeah. <laughs> well, awesome series. So throughout this, are you are you having the conversations with the actual creators? Or are you talking about to other developers? Where is it? Yeah. So usually we just have people who own their own startups who cool. are doing some interesting stuff in the space. And, and, and you know, we, we can like sort of talk about the industry as a whole, where they think it's going. They sort of champion other people that they think are really innovating there. Um, again, like, this sounds boring, but we had one week on energy and like sort of looking at renewable energy and there's like been a whole swathe of startups that um, specialize in renewable energy. So all, all everything that you spend at home, like any energy you use comes from a renewable source, which is amazing. It costs the same amount of money. And they were saying like the next step um, as electric vehicles become more and more is that you'll sort of be able to plug your car into your house and you can use the sort of energy that in the battery of your car to sort of help power your house and then you can take that off the grid and maybe eventually you'll be able to put stuff back into the grid especially if you have things like solar panels and things like that so we're basically going to be on this uh, sort of a lot more connected system where everything will help store the energy when you need to store it and then um, you know during peak times of using it you can pull on things like your car battery yeah i can't wait for it i'm I'm all up for just having solar panels everywhere why not i know why, why not absolutely Sa- save the planet you know i know mean? there was um speaking of electric vehicles there's like um i, I, did, I did this panel about sort of the future of tv and how, how we're going to consume content yeah. um in the future and one of the things that we were discussing was that loads of people are going to be playing games and consuming content in their cars because they don't have to drive them anymore. Yes. So um, Tencent, do you know the um, games company? They have bought, I think maybe they have a 5% or 10% share of, of Tesla because they want in, they want that dashboard. They want people to be playing their games and engaging with their content when they're sat, you know, for maybe two hours in the car with nothing else to do. The car's driving itself. And if you haven't seen inside of Tesla, they're, Onboard displays are like somebody's taking a TV and put it in your car. Or like more like an iPad. They're getting bigger now. Yeah. They're getting even bigger. They're enormous. I love Teslas. That yeah. would be like dream car. Yeah, oh, I've got to be honest. When you get in one, you're like, how much is? How much? Is it, what would I? How much work would I have to do to just get one of these right now? <laughs> I, I started doing the math, especially the um, is it the Model X, the one that kind of looks yeah. like a four by four? Yeah. Love it, man. Love I it. Know. Looks really good. Would you mind not driving? How do you feel about autonomous vehicles? I would like it to, I'd like their, it'd be hard to do in, in central London, for example, in cities, in a way that you'd have a choice whether to do it or not. Because I feel like you need to go all one way yeah. or all the other. I think mixing AI making decisions and human making decisions is going to be hard in these tight environments, especially in the UK where we've got slimmer roads. But on the motorway, I think there should be an uh, automated lane. I'd be well up for that. I think that'd be really good. I'd be comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, and then you could kind of click in, get in lane, you know, sync up and then go. But in terms of... But it, of, can, it, can, it can drive itself it can, already. It can. And it can change lanes it, already. It can, it can indeed. I just feel like being in, in, in the city and i don't know like a cyclist whizzing past me i don't know i'd feel like i don't know if i could trust the car i think it's safer what for everyone to be ai well no i think it's safer just ai generally oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. it's going to be a very interesting set of conversations when they're and it's going to happen i'm just sound a bit down but there's gonna be an accident right Mm -hmm. and it and it's the cars have made a decision 
but how and then and then somebody might be hurt more or somebody might be hurt less but a car's i don't know right let me give you a scenario two cars are driving towards each other yep. i'm in one you're in the car with your husband and all your family right yeah kill you number one yeah 100 percent. ai would say <laughs> 10 times out of 10 kill marcus right yep. even but, if it's just between you and me i think i would win no, they, I would they program would, the AI. They would, I would quickly, <laughs> they would quickly evaluate <laughs> yeah, our yeah. like online yeah. profiles, yeah, the impact him. that we have, yeah. and then they'll say Georgie is the greater human being. Yeah, they'll, they'll be like, "Now <laughs> we saw that tweet that was uh, <laughs> taking a mick out of Terminator Judgment Day the other day, and kind of use exactly. that." He as, needs to go. Yeah, yeah. He, he said he doesn't like go. Terminator, so he needs to go. <laughs> yeah, so I think something like that's going to happen, and then there's going to be a huge uproar, and then it's going to be like, "Well, who programmed the computer?" I think we as humans we like blame, and I yeah. think you can't get rid of the blame. So I'm, I want like all the way switch. I want to say, look, one day, no one else drives. I know. The cars drive. And then we'll get into a car which just doesn't have a steering wheel, which is amazing. More like, space for my knees. Exactly. Got long legs, mate. <laughs> yeah, well up for that. Well up for that. But yeah, no, uh, bring it on. I'm ready to go. But what will what will cyclists do when they have to deal with with uh, cars? Because cyclists don't get on with uh, cars nowadays. What are they going to do with a? Uh, well, AI I think cars? the AI will be able to predict it better okay. and and be quicker to respond. Fair enough, fair enough. You did some Formula E stuff as well, though, didn't you? Yeah, so I went over to, I, with Otis, we went to Hong Kong mm -hmm. to check out the Formula E series there. And um, it was amazing. I got driven round the track in the Formula E race car completely autonomously. I think we got, I think it can go up to maybe like 100 kilometers an hour. We didn't go that fast when I was in there because they were a bit like, you probably, you, you might die, you know. Yeah, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but it went really fast. So, so it went around the actual racetrack. Um, and this, so this was a, um, it's called the Robo Race Series that goes alongside the normal Formula E series. And it's a really interesting concept where they basically can make these cars go as fast as they can. Um, and it'll eventually be completely autonomous. It'll be like this autonomous race series where the the winner will be sort of the person who programs the car the best. That's sort of the concept of it. And like, wow. you know, because then there'll be no human in it. So they could like, sort of run them off um but in order to get to that point they need to be able to sort of have people that can sit in them so, so the actual cars literally look like they haven't got a cop, cop is that would it be cockpit, a cockpit yeah, yeah. With, i don't know yeah. should really know that you know yeah so they don't have a cockpit so they can just go around um but yeah they, they have something called the dev bot which is the one that you sort of sit in for them to like train the algorithm so i went around on that which is uh, the first time i've properly been driven by an autonomous vehicle um, and it was really interesting, like my reaction, like to begin with, phenomenal, like amazing. So the steering wheel is like in front of you and it's moving and you haven't got your hands on it and the pedals are moving and it's going f like faster than what I would around hairpin corners and stuff. Um, and then after sort of lap four or whatever, quite used to it very really? quickly. It really doesn't take long to get used to it. It really, re I, I promise you when, when autonomous vehicles eventually become mainstream, it won't be long till we just completely forget what it's like to, to be there in the car. It's like hopping in an Uber really though, isn't it? Precisely. Yeah. And again, like, um, you know, no offense to Uber drivers, but sometimes I can get into my Uber and I just don't really speak to them at all. I just literally sit down. I say, Georgie, they sort of nod, take me to my destination. I get, thank you as I leave. Wow. And you think, yeah. You're not I, on that five star life, are you? You don't care about that rating. <laughs> Georgie, you don't want that five star rating. You know what? I, 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 I know. I, 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 know I do a bit I of small this. talk. I don't do the general this, stuff. Because I, because I chat all the time in yeah. real life. Sometimes I can be a right rude bitch when I'm just out and about. <laughs> like the hairdresser. Yeah. I won't talk to my hairdresser. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm wow. Really, I know. People go there for I'm therapy. Evil. So I'm like evil. hairdressers get the unload. They they kind of expect it more time. Yeah, than not. I like get my book out, get, do my work, do computer work. I've just like made it clear that I don't want to talk. Wow. I know. I'm really grumpy. Georgie's coming <laughs> on, guys. He's ready for some exciting conversation. Oh, hi. <laughs> She's in. Hey. I'm, yeah. I'm such a fraud. Wow. I know. Do you yeah. know your Uber rating? You should ask. You know. I, I, you know what? I would look, but don't have a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cool, it's probably man. gone up since this past month of me not using it yeah yeah it's gone up yeah <laughs> definitely um you're also doing another podcast though right the two podcasts yeah so my next one um which we haven't started yet yeah. is, is it's slightly a, a, a twist on what i'd normally do um it's a sleep podcast okay which is unusual um but yeah we're looking at we've got a sleep expert um it's sort of like a well-being podcast i guess um and we get different guests on each week um you know sort of social media influences 
celebrities that kind of thing and we'll just talk to them about their sleep habits and like what they get up to and like unpick some of the science behind it and we've got the sleep expert who will sort of give insight into stuff and we're going to have different people from different areas so you know people who maybe travel a lot with with their work people who have a young family people who maybe suffer from insomnia and we'll just talk about sleep okay so and and pick up techniques to help your sleep yeah pick up techniques sort of sort of find out like you know that like genuinely just interview a bit a bit like what you do yeah. but speaking about getting ready for bed and you know sort of dreams and sleep hygiene i believe that's oh, that's, that's what they that, call it yeah sleep, sleep it's, it's of course, oh, I, I, don't, I don't think i call my podcast sleep hygiene it, no no you don't call i feel it like that. that sort of is would attract a niche audience yeah no nah, yeah it's not good i'll tell you what though um we uh i just got my hands on the latest apple watch actually oh and, nice um, there was an app did that you get given that for free I did go. I did go down to Apple, and and yeah, they did gift it to us. Yeah. Oh, for God's sake! Why is it that I don't get anything for free? Well, all I'm saying did is you, Apple may listen Billy, to this now. <laughs> Billy, did you get your 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 phone for free? No, I paid for that. All oh, right. Okay. Uh, you, I wish I wish I was. Just, just, just pointing around the room. Did you get that for free? Did you get what that for free? What about that? What about that? Humphreys. Why was I talking about watch? Oh yeah. So um, one of the things that um. It's quite interesting about this is that I was recommended an app. Uh, let me find, I'm handing the watch over to. What do oh, you think yeah. of it, by the way? What do you think of it, Georgie? I haven't actually played with it yet. It's um. Isn't it called Breathe? Like it's yeah. There is an app called Breathe on it, um, and also um, Breathe is a, is a native app. Uh, native. Actually, I'll work it on your wrist. There you go. Currently popping it on Georgie's wrist. There you go. And then I think I'm putting the password because I don't want to find that out on air. What quickly show everyone your password? <laughs> Just realised the camera's there. <laughs> show me there your you password. I want to know it. That's ah, all right. You're looking at. Do you use so the same? Do you use the same password for everything? No. For the record, all of my passwords have got a different combination. Every single one. Billy's yeah, writing it down now. You're lying. It. You're so lying. So there's a little blue bit on the screen. Tap that. That's a breathe. Breathe out. Oh, 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 oh you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and basically what it's a really interesting app and it's to do with to do with well-being um and while georgie's doing that uh it brings everything back to your breath yeah this is a really important thing your breathing technique so breathe through the power of 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 the vibrations in a watch kind of guides you to breathe in and out yeah Uh, and then if you press start i'll let you explain to the listener what's that what's actually happening Okay, so be still and bring your attention to your breath. I have to say, I really like Apple's really pushing the sort of well-being thing around 100%, gadgets. You know, 100%. I think this latest latest update with uh, sc- oh, okay. So now inhale. So it's like vibrating. It goes like and we've got a lovely little graphic on screen that gets mm. sort of bigger and smaller, like a kaleidoscope, really. Yeah, you can but change guess- that now in this version to like different kind of circles and stuff. I guess uh, the the sort of vibrations mean that you don't actually have to look at it. You could just do it through. Yes, yeah, so you can stick it on, sit on the couch, close your eyes, and just get five minutes of. Do you actually in. use this? I yeah, I really do so much. It's do a you? sort of. I was very like, what's the point when yep. it came to wearables? I'm like, if it can't do everything my phone can do and more without me needing my phone, yep. I don't care. But as a device that kind of helps to give you quick updates on your day and and things like. Uh, breathe are really good yeah OS 5 uh, just using maps because you get prompts so you're walking down the street you get a certain number of taps or type of tap to turn left certain type of tap to turn right means you can walk through I don't know be in Barcelona or France and yeah. you can make your way to the Eiffel Tower walk without having to head down. up head up looking around looking like you know where you're going exactly yes. you, you, you ain't no tourist exactly I may not be able to speak your language and only ask for beers in your language because <laughs> that's worry, the first thing use, I learned you can use Google yeah. Translate or something I can get anywhere yeah that's it yeah so the, and there are there are Translate apps as well um I think that's, you know, going back to augmented reality, yeah. that's like what's exciting about augmented reality, which eventually will mean that like screens are intrusive. They do get in the way yeah. of like looking at people in the eye or yeah. as you said, like, you know, following directions to sort of be able to walk around and actually engage with with humans in the yeah. outside world, I think is where we'll see the sort of next generation of gadgets to go to. A hundred percent. I mean, Google had a go, um, didn't work too well with them, but they're going to learn from it and I presume everyone else is going to learn from you know kind of the way that it was glass I think yeah. didn't go well I think we'll be able to progress maybe we weren't ready for it maybe you know yeah I mean it get, did look awful though didn't it I think for, I think it's imagine explaining to everyone that you know 10 years ago that 
everyone would be sharing pictures of themselves on holiday saying when they're getting a flight saying where they are saying what they're eating you'd mm. be like that's re- why would you sh- why would you share that why would you share that on the on the internet and now it's so commonplace for, for you know people to be like hey i'm here hey i'm there hi i'm wearing no clothes and i'm on holiday like Ooh. it's just normal do you know what i mean i better tune into your feed someone hasn't been on the instagram for a while right. there you go I it's all popping right here. there are some hashtags that <laughs> make your instagram real colorful um what well, I, was, I was talking about the watch um what else it got so yeah oh, like you mentioned techno- the um full detection which i thought was really interesting yeah so they're a big 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 influence on 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 sort of well-being and health and safety so the full detection they've done taken loads of data uh at, captured the way that limbs move uh, and they've obviously used the gyroscopes in in the watch the the way you fall, it's either like a, a full backwards or a full forwards or a top. Or they've taken that data and the watch can, can <laughs> Sorry, work out. Sorry, I don't know why I'm funny. funny. <laughs> Just imagine you falling <laughs> Me <laughs> fall- Oh, yeah. Me falling over is not graceful. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tall, so the bigger they are, the harder they fall. <laughs> yeah. um, so it works out when you've had a tumble and it will actually ask you if, if you had a fall. And if you don't prompt it to say, and you're unresponsive and don't move, it'll actually call the emergency services and will let them know where you are. It turns on automatically if you're o- over the age of 65. So they've really thought about looking after people. And I presume with the amount of watches they're going to sell, we're going to hear stories about people, people's lives being saved with stuff like that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's awesome. And it's got a full ECG scanner on it as well. So in the US, it's, you're, it's available. Uh, it's FDA approved. We're waiting on the approval here in the UK. So you'll be able to get a full ECG. So I, I, I believe it's called a flutter. I might, it might be wrong. So if your heartbeat is a little bit irregular, irregular, but it's irregular intermittently, you may go to your doctor and the doctor get, you know, get a full ECG or whatever. And they go, well, oh, you're fine. You know, those little symptoms that you had could be something you're great. But now you can check your heart at any time and record it. You can go to your doctor and they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, this is what's up with you potentially. So it's a real, like, but even like going to your doctor and being able to give them, you know, stats yeah, on like how much you're facts. walking yeah. and yeah. like what, what, yeah, what, what yeah. you're doing per week. I think there is, is there a GP function within that? I'm, mm-hmm. I'm like, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Where and you can sort of pass that information over to them. Yeah. They've, and they've really spruced it up. So, for example, if you had a fall three days ago, you could, your doctor can take the data. So you could be like, oh, you know what, doc, I feel a bit dizzy. Like, oh, give us, give us your detail. You had a fall three days ago. You know, you might have a little light concussion, or you know, do we have to check you check you out, take you to the doctor? So that's really important. And and um, with the activity tracker, actually, it's it's a little bit cleverer, cleverer. When you go for a walk, if you've not told it you're going for a walk after about ten minutes, it goes. Are you going for a walk? And you can say, "Yeah, I'm going." Where you going? Yeah, I'm going for a walk. He goes, "All right, I'll count those calories. You can have a donut later. Well done, (laughs) well done, you." Um, Where are you at for today's targets? Oh, oh, oh I'm going to check my activity right, rings. You're a right lazy, oh, so and so on you. I've, I've, I've got on a train and got here. What have you got? <laughs> I'm, my activity rings aren't closed. Um, well, <laughs> another cool. This is a cool thing. We can try this out on the show. Um, uh, there's something called talk, right? Mm-hmm. And it's basically a walkie-talkie. So if you, where is it? I think it's a yellow. By the way, I love walkie-talkies. I used to right. have a great Are we power talk range. To, uh, so this is, well, this is talk, right? Right. And it's basically a walkie-talkie for for your iWatch, yeah, for your Apple Watch, right? And I'm going to say, before you get this or use this or add your friends, only add your closest friends that aren't going to troll you because when this is on and somebody communicates with you, the noise just blurts out of your watch, right? So um, huge, what huge. you do is, yeah, should we talk to Huge? Yeah, yeah Huge, huge. He, was, he was recently on, a, on, on well, he's actually on TV at the moment, isn't he? Recent guest on the show and he's got uh, an Apple Watch and he's got the latest... Uh, OS, so yeah, we can try it out with him. Uh, so yeah, I think yeah, it's on Eugene now. So you press the button that says talk, and then you just shout at Eugene. He'll have no idea this is coming. You just hold, just hold it down. It's connecting to him. Are we connecting. Yeah, there you go. You're good to go. Yeah, you just hold it down and hold down the button and talk to him and let go like a walkie-talkie. I've been watching you. <laughs> like that. Oh, you can do it again. It's all right. Crack I mean, on. talk about gaffing this. Right, okay. Right. I've been watching you. How do we... Will he just talk back if he wants to? If he wants to. If he doesn't, he won't. There's a couple of other people we can try it with. Please feel free to press fast forward by 15 seconds on the <laughs> podcast app. <laughs> he won't be sitting there. He's ignoring us. Are you just Marcus, mate? What's going on? What's going on, 
So huge right now. You're um you were getting spoken to by Georgie from the Gadget Show. Say hi, man. Hi, Georgie. <laughs> <laughs> go, go. Hello. You're making guest appearance on another podcast. I mean, phone calls are a bit quicker. Are we- Sorry, could you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> Stop stealing the limelight of my podcast, all right? Come on, huge. I'll lay low for a while. Right, anyway, yeah, that's what it's like. So it's just a bit of fun. Um, I've loved it. He's just going about his day and we've just sort of... Ruined it, r- yeah. Rudely intruded on it. Br- on a date, Eugene. I mean, looking like him, he's surprised. He'd be surprised <laughs> if he isn't on a date. So it's cool. Um... And it's a bit of fun, but I've kind of like used it to be like, I actually met up with you the other day and I was like, oh, Eugene, just so you know, I'm just a couple of minutes around the corner. Um, I'll see you, see you, blah, blah, blah at the bar. And he was like, okay, cool. I'm sitting over here. It's just nice for little impromptu yeah, conversations. It is. Or uh, Billy could be downstairs, you know, in the cafe. Um, I could be like, Billy, can you pick me up a bottle of water, please? And he'd say no, but at least I'd know that Billy's giving me attitude, which is cool <laughs> and regular. <laughs> that sounds about right, Billy. Yeah, it does. See, uh, it, you, you see, know, I've, reputation. I offered you a uh, bottle downstairs. Right, we'll talk about that over walkie-talkie later. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, we will. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, also, podcasts are now on the watch too, which is really important. So you can connect your Bluetooth headphones, you get your Beats in, nice. or your Air- AirPods, and you can listen to podcasts when you're on the go. And What you would you say you use it the most for? Just checking notifications? The time. No. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, um, you know what? Breathe app I use so much. Really? Every day I make time, or if I'm in a rush, I make time to spend five minutes working on breathing. And it's amazing how long five minutes feels when you're controlling your breathing. It's great at just centering yourself at yeah. specific times. And like day. stops the chitter chatter of thoughts, which I think technology can give you quite a lot, you know, because you're I'm constantly sorry. connected. I mean, you know, it, for example, using something like this, just yeah. like people are constantly sort of like, invading your space so exactly. i can imagine something like that it's quite good to just exactly. switch exactly and health and fitness so when i'm in the gym i activate it when i'm walking it tells me i'm walking now uh yeah i use it for that and that's really good if you're calorie counting as well and i don't mean in a in a in a ridiculous sort of oh i've had this but the it's it's scientifically proven the more you look at the stats for what you eat and how you exercise the better you get at it so it's yep. really good it's really informative and i think the key thing for me with with the apple watch is just it's just the, the the welfare, the well-being side of things. It's not like, hey, it does this for no reason. It's like, we do this because we want you to be healthier and better. Oh, another thing. If your heartbeat goes over a specific, if you're over 120 BPM, it used to go off and tell you, hey, uh, it doesn't feel like you're moving, but your heartbeat's beating really fast. You're okay. It now does that if your heart beats too slowly as well. You can say okay. it for that too. Um I mean, my only thing is, and I still have this problem with most smartwatches, <laughs> is that I still think they're a bit too big for me. What do you think? That is the bigger one. That's a 40, 44, I think. So yeah. um, I just a think on a, girl's, on a girl's wrist, like very rarely, do I, I, just, they, I just want the tech to be a little bit thinner. You want like a low profile kind of? No, I don't. I just it? want it to be thinner. Just so like it's... it's just, just so like it's like, less... a, like a watch, like real... Because I just don't like I would I wouldn't wear a chunky watch in real life. You're not a chunky watch wearer. Not not a chunky watch wearer. Not though. a chunky watch wearer. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I do like Kit Kat chunkies though. Oh man, <laughs> just the best just from right. Down there. Don't want to be just saying. Did you get offered one downstairs? I know they serve them in the calf bill. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I did have a Kit Kat chunky ones that had, didn't have the Kit Kat in it. Oh, it, it's just that solid like, chocolate. Yeah, just one of those ones that just I got feel like you could outside win something. the batch, and you said. Oh, that, that good. sounds deli- how did oh. you, how did you eat it because if it, i presume if it was like a cold day you couldn't smash into it no it was in summer i think i remember yeah, yeah so it was, it was right it's- or did you just put it in your pocket and walk around for a little while till it warmed up <laughs> yeah no 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 is that a kit kat chunky in your pocket or are you just uh happy to see me bill oh well, maybe i'm happy to see oh, you I mean, yeah. <laughs> right anyway welcome back to how to kill an hour <laughs> After that quick ad break, um, is there anything else you want to let us know about, Georgie? Because I know you're very busy, so we've got to wrap this episode real soon. Um, no. I, no. <laughs> I feel like I've covered it all. Where can like, we find you online? Uh, at Georgie Barrett. Mm-hmm. 
across everything. And as of today, I'm going to have a new phone. So expect more updates. Yes. Expect the Twitterization, Instagram. What's your favourite social media at the moment? Instagram, probably. Instagram's where it's Instagram at stories. Now. Oh, my gosh. Just where is it. that? Snap. Do you got to do some catching up, Snap. I know. They've got some tricks in the bag, which we haven't got time to talk about on today's show. They've got a few tricks in the bag, but they need to do their work. I mean, that whole story situation used to be their domain. And um, I think Facebook tried to buy them. And when they said no, Facebook were like, all right. Bring it on. Do it ourselves. Yeah. What? Uh, what's your favorite? It's got to be Insta stories. I love the polls. I love the questions. I love just... I just love you can tag people in You just get good engagement, it. don't you? Yeah. With Insta stories. It's really just fun. It's like a good domain out there, man. It's a good laugh. Uh, so Georgie Barrett so and everything. I haven't been on Insta stories for ages. So yes, th- they will be appearing yes. as of tomorrow. Yes, 100%. But you, I think now that you're back, you need to send at least one Kanye West meme. It's the <laughs> I love it video <laughs> with the big shoulders. Um, basically, if I haven't that seen you that meme this comeback. week, I don't love you. Okay. It's, it's got to be a comeback. you just got to be back in the building like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be great, man. It would be great. But thank you for joining us on today's show. Thank and head you so the much. Microphone I know. As well. <laughs> I'm getting excited. Sorry. <laughs> I'm thinking about my phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, The Gadget Show, when can we expect the new series? So it's starting in a couple of weeks in October. Okay, October 2018. Friday night, 7 p.m., Channel 5. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, make sure you check that out. I've been Marcus Bronzy. I've been Georgie Barrett. Yeah, this has been How to Kill an Hour. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. Just before you go and listen to the next episode or listen to the previous one or go to our website. I'm going to tell you about our website. <laughs> howtokillanhour.com. Make sure you check it out. Thank you very much. 